Hi, I am Thomas from Neuzeit Instruments, artist named Hutenberger, and this is part two of my tutorial series on how I perform electronic music live. In this part of the series I will show you the synthesizer voices in the Eurorack case, how they sound and what makes them so special and expressive. In this episode I will use many Eurorack specific terms and if you are new to the subjects and don't know some of the terms don't worry too much, just focus on the sound. As said in my previous video, my live setup consists of several synth voices. I will start with the voice in the lower row of the Eurorack section here. This voice is built around my own product, the Neuzeit Orbit. The Orbit is a versatile effects module and combines a bit crusher with a so-called harmonizer circuit that builds additional oscillations on top of the incoming signal. It also includes an analog filter to shape the sound. I feed the Orbit with several oscillators. The main oscillator on input 1 is a Mutable Instruments Braids clone. It gets its pitch information from the MIDI notes coming from Ableton. The Droid modules in my rack act as a translator from MIDI to control voltage. Braids is a digital oscillator that produces a variety of complex waveforms. Combining them with Orbit gives me all kinds of spacey sounds. For example, this is what I can get out of a simple sine wave when I play Orbit with Orbit's harmonizer and bit crusher. As soon as I change to a more complex wave, the result can be quite surprising. It is always cool to compare the dry signal with the wet signal and see the effect of orbit. The second oscillator that goes into orbit is this pretty guy here from my very early days in modular synthesizers. It is a self-built dual analog sawtooth oscillator which goes to orbit's input number two. This oscillator does not have its pitch input connected at all, so it just spits out a sawtooth with a constant frequency. When playing, I just tune it by ear to the bass frequency of the track. This is kinda dirty, but I like the effect and as soon as it meets the right pitch, it can support the melody of the main oscillator. The third source is the second sawtooth oscillator that hides behind this neat faceplate, which goes into the Dupfer A126 frequency shifter, followed by a simple volume knob and finally going into the filter input of the orbit. The Dupfer frequency shifter is, on purpose, never in tune. I like the special sound it produces and use it for plonky and percussion sounds that play in a higher pitch. Adding external effects such as a delay, a reverb and a pitch shifter, Orbit creates atmosphere but can also be the peak of the track.
The next voice is built around the Dupfer VCF A1036, right here, which is the same low pass filter that the iconic Roland TV303 synthesizer uses. This makes this voice prone to be used for baseline and, of course, acid sounds. I have two oscillators going into the filter. The first one is this step for A110 standard VCO from which I use the sawtooth output. The pitch signal comes from the Droid Master, like all pitches in my rack. I can set slew rates for rising and falling pitch with these small potentiometers over here from the Droid. The filter envelope is an AD envelope and also comes from the Droid Master. I can set attack and decay here. The VCA envelope is also the second half of the Dupfer ADSR. With all that, the voice is basically a Roland TV303. As a second oscillator, I can add the Erica Synth Wavetable VCO, which I can mix here with the Duffer VCO in this little module. It's funny that there already is a wavetable that sounds pretty much like an overdriven TB303. This is actually the wavetable I use most in this voice. So this is what the raw wavetable sounds like. And with this knob, I can scroll through the wavetable. <laughs> Now when I use the wavetable oscillator in combination with the actual TB303 filter, it can turn into a, let's say, TB303 on steroids. In Ableton, I also have a bit crusher and distortion as an insert effect behind this voice. I can control them with this fader of the M4, which sends out MIDI CC to Ableton, which is mapped to the effects parameters. I often partner this voice with the chord minilog down here and have to play both the main sequence of a track. So this is the minilog playing along. third modular voice is built around the Seox Odessa, which is a digital additive oscillator. I use it mainly to play pad sounds, especially in combination with large reverb, delay and a pitch shifter. But it can also be used for cutting lead sounds that sound quite different from the usual synthesizer sounds that I know.
into this Dreadbox Eudaimonia low pass filter, which has 24 decibel per octave slope and also an integrated high pass filter. The Odessa also has this ability to fade from a very cutting and narrow sound to a broad and wide sound spectrum. I like the density knob a lot for doing that. Unfortunately, it also has its own CV input for that, so I patched the CV from the Droid Master to the input and assigned a fader of the M4 to it. So now I can change the tonality of the Odessa by moving the fader. You might be wondering. Why does he use the fader and not just the knob on the actual module? Well, the knob is totally fine, but the reason to use the fader instead is probably the most awesome performance feature of the whole rack. But for today, I will leave you with this cliffhanger and save it for the next part of the video series. So stay tuned and see you then.